What's up, guys? It's me, your faithful host, Let's Play Dark Souls HD. And welcome back to our in-depth playthrough of Elden Ring. So we left off right here, where this big bridge is, up in the northern, northeastern area of Limgrave, right where the Pumpkinhead guy is. We covered some caves last time. We did this one right here. This one's kind of a doozy, the High Road Cave. And we also covered couple down here. We did this one out here on the coast with the murder bear. Or, well, that's the Impaler's Catacombs. That one gave us um, not so much trouble, but uh, this one did. The Earth Boar Cave kind of gave us a little bit of a headache. And then uh, we also did this one over here, this Tombsward Cave, where it died three times in there to poison. So sorry for how shitty I played in the last episode. Um, gonna try to be more on top of my game for this one, because uh, it's not like I'm setting a standard or anything right. So, the first thing I want to do in this episode is we've got quite a chunk of runes on us. Can't level up, but we almost can, with just a few hundred more. So, strategically, I'm going to pop a couple rune items just so we can spend the runes that we have instead of running around with them. Like I uh, keep telling you guys, I keep comparing the runes to, like, finances. So, uh, in a way, think of it as, like, I don't know. You don't want to run around with all of your money in your checking account, right? Okay, that ought to be just enough. Maybe. Wow. Would you look at that. So, I want one point of... How about dexterity? <laughs> Let's get a little more damage. Why not? Because I feel like everything else we have is perfectly good. I mean, we can survive a few hits. We're fine. Um, before we stand up from the graves, what I really want to do is this. We'll take care of this real quick. We are going to put... Hmm... Now here... is the problem. You can't... And I wish they would fix this in a patch. I wish to fuck they would fix this. Uh, you cannot look at what your AR is. Like, you can't hit triangle or anything and look at your stats. And you can't compare the freaking damage. So the only thing you can really do is that you can either be really good at math and look at the damage, or you can go to the menu and do what I do and just compare directly with the damage so this is 144 and 49 so you know like 200 and something damage if it's standard but uh almost anyway and then this one would be easily over 200 so it looks like we'll have more damage if we go the sacred route because we will get that nice scaling in faith and we will also get a big bump of holy damage on our weapon so let's look at the standard our attack is 193 with this right now. Almost 200. What? If we go the sacred route, we are at 240. So our damage is much higher with the sacred one, because, I mean, we just did some basic math there under the, the specs of the weapon for what we were using, but this is what we want right here. So if I use this golden vow... Oh, yeah. Yeah, goes up to 200. So that's 28 points of damage it went up. That doesn't seem crazy, like a lot, but I'm telling you, it's it's plenty. And it also increases our defense, I believe. So let's read the Ash of War. Skill passed down from the antiquity, the antiquity among the knights of the capital. Raise armament aloft and pledge honor to the Erd Tree in battle, granting self and nearby allies increased attack power and defense. Oh, yeah. So... This is the weapon art that comes standard on the Golden Halberd, and now we can put it on whatever the hell we want, which is nice. So, yeah, I think that's probably the smartest one for us. As much as I like the regular weapon art that is on the, uh, we can't put one on our crossbow, as much as I love the weapon art that's standard on these flails, Golden Vow is awesome. It'll raise our damage, it'll just help us out significantly in a lot of situations so what i talked about in the last episode when we left off was i believe what i mentioned was clearing out this area so that's what we're gonna do we're just gonna cross the bridge and we're gonna follow the road and then later on we're going to be able to unlock golden bow is just an incantation so that way we don't have to use it as an ash of war and we can do both, because I'm not sure if they in, intended for this to happen or not, but you can stack 
golden vows in this game. As in, cast more than one from more than one source. And they will stack. They will both significantly raise your attack and your defense. It's really freaking cool. And I've experimented with it. I've played around with all the damage buffers in the game and all that. And you can... Uh, let's just say you can rack up some seriously disgusting damage in this game. I'll get plenty of opportunities to show you exactly what I mean. Like, I'm not just talking about it. I am, uh... I practice what I preach, so... Like, yeah, you guys are gonna come out of the ground and... Holy damage on our thing, though, so these guys are, like, super fucked now. <laughs> They're already weak to, uh... Blunt damage, but... Or strike damage, it's called in this game, but... Now we have holy damage, which they are also weak to, so... These guys are no problem. Not that we like need to fight them like not they would be a problem not that they would be a problem to begin with because we don't need to fight them at all if it doesn't make any sense to us it's the great thing about being in an open world setting pick your battles fight enemies that make sense to you because you are under no obligation to kill all of them okay so heading off into this direction we're gonna go fight this joke ass boss after we grab this grace. And within these ruins, there's going to be a nice talisman that we can get. And uh, I know it doesn't do a whole lot of good for me to be picking up all these talismans and getting excited about them right now because we only have one talisman slot. And that 100% is reserved for the sword seal at all times, no matter what. No other talisman that we have is superior to this thing at all, or even close. But once we beat Margit, we'll get a second slot, and then we will have plenty of reasons to get excited about other talismans. So there's not a bunch of stuff in these ruins. Um, there aren't, like, a bunch of items scattered around. You don't have to be super thorough through here. Uh, you've just got, like, skeleton guys, you know. Weak-ass skeleton guys that we flat-out steamroll. And the occasional dragonfly that is just a cocksucker. Uh, excuse my language. I try not to be like a straight up sailor on my channel. <laughs> I know I'm not, uh, I'm not necessarily PG, but um, I don't want to be like R rated either. I would like to try to stay somewhat accessible to many age groups. Not worried about that guy getting away because I don't need my Crimson Flasks refilled. So let me go back in here, sweep through this first building one more time. Okay, it doesn't look like there's anything here. That's fine. So we don't... Uh... Okay, so let's fight this guy. The, uh... The Tibia Mariner. He's like, uh purple ghost boat <laughs> first time I saw him um, he really threw me off I was like what the hell is that uh, he's mega weak like do you see how much we just did in like one strong attack <laughs> this guy is weak bro like and he'll like turn the boat to like try to hit you with it and it's kind of funny it's weird like I don't I don't know man like And he hurts his own guys, like, I really don't know what's going on with this guy. He's so weak. Holy shit. What an easy boss. And then everything around him dies. We 2400 runes, and we got a death root. Great. And then we got the Skeletal Militiaman Ashes. So that is the real prize in this scenario, ladies and gentlemen. That Spirit Summon... It may not seem like much. Let's actually take a look at it and make sure we don't get attacked, but summon two skeletal militiamen spirits. These are the spirits of militiamen who live in death and will continue to rise again until properly finished off. That. Read that again if you have to. These guys are exactly like the skeletons that we've already been fighting. You have to hit them again while they're on the ground, glowing, and they're like 
weakened or vulnerable state in order to truly finish them off. And that counts for the spirit ashes too. So if you use those against bosses, odds are that boss is going to like beat them and finish them off and then suddenly they're going to come right back to life if the boss doesn't hit them again. And I got to tell you, after experimenting with those ashes, it's a very low chance. A very low chance that the boss is going to hit again in that same exact spot and finish them off. Because usually, once they go down like that into that that glowing state, the boss completely loses interest and de them and goes for you again because they are technically defeated in that state. They're no longer attacking or uh, gaining aggro. So, it's just really cool. I think it's a great feature. It's very... Uh, it's very subtle. It's one of those things where you probably would have no idea that you can take advantage of it until you actually try. Like, you gotta be paying attention, for sure. So, let's see. Yes, I'm doing that thing again where I look like an idiot because I'm attacking the floor. Because in some of these dungeons, the floor is fake. And I don't think this is one, but it's not a risk I'm willing to take. Check why you can. Here we go. This is where we want to go. We want to go up into this one. Yeah, here we go. All right. So this one only requires one. We got plenty. Damn it. How many do we have? Okay, we have one more. Great. So once we have our second talisman pouch, this is going to be super relevant. And do not touch these turtles. Nothing bad happens if you do, I just don't want you to. Leave them alone. They're peaceful creatures. Green turtle talisman is essentially the Claranthi ring from Dark Souls. It increases your stamina regeneration. And we now have two items that will do that for us, so probably wouldn't hurt to do that, huh? <laughs> I mean, I'm not really using my shield all that much while I'm running through the world, like mostly during boss fights and uh, during areas where I need to pull enemies like one at a time or whatever. Um, this shield, my only thing about it is it doesn't block 100% physical damage, which is, I don't know why, it's a turtle shell, it's like super defensive, but... Uh, having this turtle shell, we can just like put it on our back, you know, kind of look like Ninja Turtle Confessor. But um, this will passively make our stamina regenerate, and you can see the little turtle neck meat icon up where my stamina bar is. So that should be the only one of those in this area, but I'm going to run up here, check these ones out just because. So I don't want to miss anything. All right, I think we might be in the clear. I don't see anything. I'm gonna hit the ground, just because. All right. Now, let's look inside here. Ah, there we go. <laughs> A tier four golden room, not bad. That would have sucked to miss. Alright, and if we push any further up in this direction, it's just going to start taking us towards Kaelid, and that whole thing is just like a big heap of shit. Like, that's a hard pass right now. I'm going to go grab this next Grace up here just so when it, the time comes and we're ready to uh, warp down this way and start pursuing this, we can. And we can just like teleport or whatever, but... Oh man, I don't want to fight this NPC. I'm gonna... I don't want to. All right, let's get our Laura Candy. Lord Godfrey. At last, at the end of his campaign, his golden armies unvanquished and unbowed, yet find, finds grace lost, tattered, and faded. So there's that name again, Godfrey. It's going to kick me off the horse anyway. I don't know why. I, yep, wow. <laughs> that was fast. Before this NPC comes out of the ground and just completely stomps me, I'm going to light this grace, because 
Shit's about to get real. Yep, there it is. Anastasia, Tarnished Eater. I don't desire to be eaten, but let me get these. Ooh. Oh my god, I hate that attack so much. All right, I'm gonna set you on fire. Get my fire bombs ready too, because I. Uh, the NPCs are smart in this game, man. Oh my god, that did a lot of damage. Alright, let's heal. Mm -mm. Nope. There we go. Now, this NPC should not really have any poise, theoretically, but the problem is that weapon has, like, hyper armor. Like, some of her swings will just go immediately through. So it's not necessarily ideal to trade. Ah! <laughs> Bruh, you're stuck. That was funny. <laughs> okay, so one of those items we... Oh my god, are you kidding me? She dodged me by jumping. That never works for me. Oop. That, like, chop attack from... It's been in every single Souls game, right? Like, it's the Butcher Knife in Dark Souls, and it's the... What you call it? The Meat Cleaver in Demon Souls, and then, uh... It's in the other ones, too. It's, uh... That weapon is in every single Souls game, and it's got that chop animation. It's really cool. That one, in particular, scales with strength and faith. It's a really cool sword. But, um, I don't think we're gonna end up using it. We'll get it at some point, though. So we get a talisman from her. Raises holy attack, but lowers your damage negation. So essentially, your holy damage will be increased, but you will also take more holy damage from your enemies. It's uh, It seems like a fair concept, right? And we picked up another cookbook. Let's take a look. We got a lot of these so far, so we can make the silver pickled foul foot, script stone, grace mimic, holy water pot... Exalted Flesh, that's what we want. We want to be able to make that, because it'll increase our attack. What do we need to make that? What do you know? The Arteria Leaf. So, the Arteria Leaf is going to be, like, your pain-in-the-ass item to find in order to make this. So, that's why I was mentioning before that the game is going to send you into these horrifically dangerous situations to get that stupid leaf, and you're going to be like, why did I go into this horrifically difficult mob just to pick up a damn red flower? That's why because it's an important ingredient to make the Exalted Flesh. And the Exalted Flesh is something you're going to want on you in a pinch when you just need that extra damage. So, this is as far as I'm going to go up here. I just wanted to grab that Grace, and that's it. Uh, we're not going to go any further into Kaelid because it's just like a big no-no zone. But I do want to have that Grace so that when the time comes, we can warp there. There was a giant over here. I recall seeing a giant. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to scale our way downward from where this giant is. And we're still going to clear the same area that I mentioned, but uh, when he does this and he's just looking around, hit him. Free opportunity to get some bleed or something on him. All right. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised he hasn't pulled the sword out yet. Wow. <laughs> Alright, I mean, if you want to make it easy for me, like, I ain't gonna say no. Shit, that was an easy giant fight. Okay. No complaints from me. Zero. Okay, so let's scale the wall here, make sure there's no items tucked away that we will miss. Okay, and this establishment we're working down towards, that right there is the, uh, the third Church of America, where the teleporter is that takes you to the Dragon Barons. Get rid of these wolves. Because it's easy and they're weak. Oh, wow. We got the uh, the neutralizing boluses. That is the poison cure item. <laughs> that would have been super helpful back in that cave. 
Okay. So let me point this out to you. This is what I was talking about. There's two items down there, and the one that is, like, on the actual cliffside there, where you see, it looks like the guy is sitting down at the cliffside um, and staring out at the ocean, is the arcane sword. So I think the cave that we need to do in order to get that is way up there in uh, Kaelid. Unfortunate. Not that we need the sword. Like, I'm not mad that we can't get it. I really am not, because I don't care for arcane. Like, I'm not going to use it on my character. But, uh, I did want to try to grab it just because, uh, it's there. It's something to grab to make sure that we cover everything. Because I want to try to get all the items in this playthrough. As many of them as I possibly can. So there is an item up here where this wolf pack is. This wolf has glowy eyes. Give me them runes. Very nice. Well, am I interrupting like a speech? It's like they're all waiting and listening to him. Weird. Stick with me, and you'll never go hungry again. It's great that we'll soon be connected to a king called the Altamador. But of course, quid pro quo, you're expected to take certain duties on board. The future is littered with prizes. Yep, yeah, that was... You just witnessed a straight-up Lion King throwback. Don't at me. Okay, so to get down, we can jump into that spring. I want the Scarab. So we're going to go get him once we finish scaling this cliff to make sure there's no items. All right. Killer. So we will do this. We'll jump down into the spring. We'll bombard this guy. Come here. Nice. Sacred Blade. So that, Ash of War, will not only buff your weapon with holy damage, but it does a projectile. Super cool. Okay, and in this body of water, this is going to lead back into that spot with uh, the bear. And then the teleporter is tucked away in these little bushes right in front of us. We covered that. So let's go ahead and go back here where this fight is happening. It's really cool to watch, actually. It's like a giant pack of wolves fighting against this bear. Check this out. I kind of want to, like, join in on the fight. <laughs> oh, well, I can't now, but... Alright. Let's do what's important. Grab the item they're guarding. It's Tier 2 Smithing Stone. Some Trina's Lilies for our Sleepy Time Arrows. Shoo, boy. Alright. Oh, no. Man, why would y'all lock on bombard me like that? Don't lock on bomb me. Oh, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Did they do it again? Oh, I thought that was him again. Ooh. Damn. <laughs> I'm so dead. <laughs> wow, that was close. See if he likes this. Oh, that did good. What the hell? Damn, son. Mm. Wow. Sometimes I don't even know how the hitbox works with the bear. <laughs> okay, he's got that. All right, let's bubble up, huh? All right. Damn, this one brave wolf is just like. Come here, bear. I got you. Soul you. <laughs> really need to try to bleed him. 
All right, so let's be honest, the wolves kind of did most of the work against that guy, but we got gold tinge instrument and the beast blood from him. And we're gonna pick up these bones that were dropped by these wolves because it's crafting material that's going to serve us well. I still have yet to find out if a cave like spits you out right there or something. It seems like, I don't know, pretty realistic. It seems like it could be totally possible, but cannot confirm, unfortunately. Or maybe I haven't, I just don't recall. There would be no way of knowing. Okay, so this giant right out here in front of the Church of America always responds. Uh, if you get to a point where you're trying to, like, test a weapon to really see how much damage it does, so you can use him. Like, that's honestly what I do. Like, when I'm trying to test out a weapon and see how good it is and how applicable it can be in certain situations or just trying to figure out how hard it hits, I like to warp here and test it out on him. He's an excellent candidate for that. So, I had mentioned before that there was an NPC whose quest line that I think I may have messed up. And it's this guy. So, let's clear out these demi humans and let's see if we can still do this quest line. Because I think me storming the fort Hello? may have messed it up. Oh, he's Is still here! You? Great! Someone who might be interested in rescuing the great Kenneth Height. Servant to the True Order and celebrated repudiator of the Fonks! Oh, Urchin, grab me, sucker! Okay, so I know these guys are weak, right? Like, these guys are not, like, super dangerous, but that does not... That does not give you... See what I mean? When they all start hitting Torn at once, it's like, it can get really ugly. Um... Just because they're weak and they're not strong on their own does not mean you should drop your guard against them or get sloppy when there's 12 of them. Like, if there are like 12 of these guys, you should 100% treat them like you're fighting 12 adversaries. And I wish this guy would shut up. Oh my god, man. Here, this part's... Yes, we understand. Yes, we understand. Please stop. Dear God. Okay. He will keep saying that until you find him up here. Hello? Stop, Is stop, stop, there? stop, stop. Someone who might be interested For the in love of God, the... stop. Ah, you come to lend me your aid, have you? Well, that's... That's very kind, but, um... No. No, the, the help is very much appreciated. Even from a tarnished... Despite what, are you racist? Nobility is no prerequisite to serving the true order. You might have heard of me, Kenneth Height. Next in line is the rightful ruler of Limgrave, the Untarnished. I would have a boon of you. I want you to take back my fort. It lies to the south, beyond the Mistwood. A knight commander from Stormvale took it, a fool and plumb mad to boot, simply obsessed with blood. Okay, so, you and I, well, when I say you and I, I mean you guys, <laughs> my viewers, you guys and I are about to learn something here. Um, because I already went over there, and I already did all of that, I pretty much sieged that fort solo. Um, I killed that knight he was talking about, that dropped the blood blade, Ash of War. I wonder if when I talk to him again right here, he's going to advance his quest line because I already did all that shit. Mm -hmm. What's this, fair lady? Remarkable. The Knight Commander dead. Already? <laughs> A blessing if ever I chanced upon one. Fine work, I say. Fine work indeed. I doubt that it was your intention, but the deed is done, and I commend you. Now, this is your reward. Go on. It's yours I think it's a dagger. For the keeping. Yep, the Erdsteel Dagger. Right then, time for me to head to the fort. I've much to do. First, I'll have to re-establish communication with the Demi-Humans. What's that look? You don't believe me? Well, under the Erd Tree, co-mingling with the Demi-Humans is made possible. Even the Vulgar shall not be left behind under the rule of true order. Which is why I, Kenneth Height, next in line as the rightful ruler of Limgrave, have sworn to uphold it. 
Just you watch, my friend. Just you watch. God, the way he describes himself, his title is almost as annoying to listen to as, like, Daenerys Targaryen. <laughs> ah, yes. I've, uh, I've been meaning to ask, would you like to enter my service? I see bright things in your future, stout warrior. Enter into my service and learn the workings of the Erd Tree's true order. And who knows? Perhaps sometime down the line, the grace of gold will return to those tarnished eyes of yours. What say you? A fine accord, is it not? So, with this quest line, in my first playthrough, I was never really able to figure out what happens with this guy because I pledge my service to him, and then he doesn't really ask me to do anything, and he just ends up going back to his fort, and he just stands up there and says, I need to find a true ruler for Limgrave. But... I think because he mentions the Erd Tree and the Golden Order, he probably has something to do with D and like those who live in death and hunting them. So I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna try to see what I can do differently in this playthrough to get through his quest line. Very well, very well indeed. I knew I saw something in you. I shall await you at my fort. We shall hold a ceremony for your knighting there, I think. I see great things ahead of us. We are truly by the Erd Tree blessed. Right then, time for me to head to the life much. Okay, that is the end of his dialogue. So once we rest at a grace or quit out or anything that resets the game, he will then be at that fort. And I want to go talk to some other people, like D and them. I want to go try to get some other interaction in before we actually talk to him there because that may have been what ruined the quest line for me and made him kind of freeze on my other game. So let's pick up these rune items. We'll get these first and we'll pick up the important purple item last. Okay, what we got here? Ooh, okay. Checking this out right now. The sleep pot. Wonderful. Let's see what it takes to make that. Okay. Just the Trina's lily and a mushroom. Easy enough. And uh, the sleep pot... I've tried to test it alongside the sleep arrow. Like, really I have. I've tried to compare them and be like, you know, what, which one's better if one is in the first place. But I really can't figure it out. I can't figure out which one builds more. I've not looked on the wiki to like see, and I don't even know if that information is on there yet because this game is still relatively new and huge and there's no possible way we can know everything about it yet. But the sleep pot, if you don't have the arrows, like if you don't have the means to make the arrows because you don't have the bones or whatever it is, the sleep pot is 100% uh, also a killer option. if you want to try to stealth your enemies and put them to sleep. So what do we got over here? I see some dragonflies. Not much of anything else. And this is just going to lead us straight back down towards the main road where we can hit the mistwood. So let's do that. Let me make this jump. Lots of dragonflies. Lots of dragonflies. Holy shit. Okay, we got a torch guy. Here's another grace that we have not unlocked yet. So I'm glad we're combing through this area because we are also finding graces that we didn't have before. So what's this one called? This is the Mistwood Outskirts. Okay, great. Alright, so we could have Holy Blade on this one, and it's got uh, a different scaling. Oh, it's the same. Alright, never mind. Good deal. Okay, it is nighttime. It's scary around here. So let's look at our map. Mistwood Outskirts. We are directly in between the main road and the Mistwoods, so... I'm going to kind of like peruse around through here in this general spot. And once I look up through here, 
just to make sure that uh, there's no items floating around that I missed or anything like that, which I'm sure there are. We'll probably find a couple. But I just want to grab those. And then we're going to go take down a couple of the Everjail bosses. I'm starting with the one that helps further Blyde's quest line. So let's see. Okay, we already found one thing. Nice. It's probably string. No, golden rune one. Okay, basically the same thing. Usually anytime you run into a like a demi-human trap like that, it is 100% something stupid that's not worth getting your ass kicked over. Okay, this series of tombstones over here that you can drop down on. Although I'm not seeing a reason why you would. I don't think there's a cave down here or anything. I'll play ball. Let's see what's down here. Why would they want you to drop down on this spot? What's here? A couple bears. Here, I'll turn on my lantern in case you guys are having a hard time seeing. Hey! So we found some items. Let's grab these. Glowstone. Rainbow stone. Now the normal bears I'm not worried about. But these big ass rune bears, I'm worried about them. Like, I don't want to fight these guys, so. Can you even find your way up here, man? Nah, he is literally not even aggroed on me anymore. That's hilarious. <laughs> okay. So I am fairly certain that we have got basically everything in the Mistwoods. Minus like, maybe one item, if that. Alright, we'll just grab this Grace. So yeah, let's, uh, let's head back over here. Let's go to Agia Lake South. We'll do an Everjail boss with uh, the help of our pal Blyde. It's a very exciting fight. So you see what I mean with these guys that stand up with the glowy eyes. The one that we found crawling around out there near the War Master Shack, he does not have the glowy eye like these guys. And uh, he doesn't stand up like them either. He kind of crawls across the ground. It's crazy. Not sure what the deal is with that. So the Forlorn Hound Everjail. Let's go. And then Blyde pops up right here. So we'll summon Blyde. And we're going to buff him as soon as he gets in. Darawell. Rotting in a cell is no true justice. No. This is where it ends for you. So he's got a really cool dialogue at the beginning there where he's addressing Darwill almost as if, like, he's had some kind of history with him, you know? Okay, and then we get Darwill's weapon, the Bloodhound's Fang. This is an excellent weapon. Uh, my friend Jeremy, who has been playing this game alongside me and we've been sharing our journey with each other and keeping each other posted. And we also do co-op sometimes. It's a lot of fun, but uh, I remember Jeremy was a huge fan of this great sword and he used it a lot across uh, his first playthrough of the game. He's still in his first playthrough, but um, he used this weapon a lot and uh, he put a couple ashes of war on it that would scale with intelligence and uh, he also was just imbuing it with magic and he said on a dexterity build that had a lot of intelligence this thing was hitting like a truck so in his experience this is just a killer weapon and i think i think i'm gonna want to give it a shot because it does need a little more strength um but because i've got the source seal i technically have the amount of strength i need to use it it is a little on the heavier side but it won't be a problem for us um it starts with a d in strength and a c in dex and it does cause bleed it's got 55 bleed build up and it does have the bloodhounds finesse which is such a cool weapon skill i'm going to show it off for you guys just so you can see it 
Wow, we don't fat roll with it. That's amazing. Let's check this out. Is that amazing or what? Yeah, totally see why he likes this weapon a lot. It's uh, super duper cool. It's got great damage. We're probably going to end up using it. <sighs> right. There you are. Not to work for it, but it's done. Don't say I'm not a man of my word. Here's your prize. We get a somber smithing stone tier two. Oh, yes. I should say. If you venture north to Rea Lucaria and come across a venerable blacksmith who's a little on the large side, tell him I sent you. And he'll be sure to treat you right. I owe you one, I reckon. That's enough chit chat for now. It's time we parted ways. That's enough. It's time we part. So he's kind of distant at first. He's uh, he's a little bit like, eh, we really don't need to actually talk to each other, but uh, thanks for your help. Now go away. That's kind of his attitude at first, but eventually, once we start venturing below down to like Nakron and stuff like that, he's uh, he kind of opens up and it's very cool. So the blacksmith he was referring to is going to be all the way up in this region, which there's a huge, huge, huge region up here called Lyernia of the Lakes. And I'm going to have a lot of fun exploring that and uh, showing you guys some cool tips and tricks on how to navigate that area when we get to it. There's a lot to do, but the blacksmith is up that way. So we're not going to meet the blacksmith that he's talking about just yet, but there's one more event that we can do to further Blyde's questline, which is always good because he's obviously very cool. Look at him. <laughs> so now what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to the Weeping Evergel. So we can squeeze a couple Everjail bosses into this episode. Uh, these two in particular aren't like super duper difficult. Perfectly manageable. I think it should be this way, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, let's head over to this guy. Mm. It's weird. It's not glowing. Strange, right? Probably because I should do this. So this is my only other stone sword key. Gonna use it just so we can do the boss. And the reason I'm doing this boss in particular is because this is the last thing we have to do in this area at all. So let's go smash this guy real quick. buff and get our block going oh I remember this guy no oh, normally that works normally it'll just go like right under you okay we get our bubble going get our block going okay now they're gonna go Frostbite mode. So, <clears throat> with this boss, in particular, ee, that hurts <laughs> if you get hit by it. Um, they usually come flying forward out of that. Okay, there we go. Let me uh, jump for that. Do not roll. Jump. Oh, that's weird. Why didn't I drink my thing? Come on. Thank you. Oh, shit. Shoo. Thank God for the bubble. There we go. Come here, you. What the hell? That was weird. That was weird. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that was strange. I had my shield up. Um, never encountered that before. I almost always beat this boss on the first try. That's kind of embarrassing. Okay, let's fix that real quick. Let's do something about this. And this boss isn't super important to me. It's not going to give me something like really cool that I'm going to want to use. But now I'm just pissed off. Okay. Let's get our 
bus going? Go. Locked. Because fuck you. Ooh. No. Come here. There we go. No. Go get that hit. Mm -mm. Damn it, that <laughs> was close. Not quite. Oh, wow, did not expect that to happen. Get heal, get our bubble. Ah. Uh. There we go. Oh, wow. That missed me. That almost never misses. Shit. Ow. Jump. Ooh. God, that attack. It doesn't do hardly any damage, but the problem is it has the frostbite build up. I don't think it's meant to hurt you. I think it's meant to, like proc the status. Ow. That, wow. I wonder if they... Feels to me like they updated that attack. Because normally, I can recall being able to just uh, stay away and then be able to get a hit in at the last second. There we go. That sucked. Come here, you. We'll have none of that. Don't care about that. Didn't even hurt. There we go. The second try. Not bad. So the key with that boss is defensive play will really work against you. And that's why I said I didn't need anything that boss dropped, because the boss literally drops the inferior version of the talisman that we risk our lives for. So, the Radigan Sword Seal is much better. I'll show you what I mean. This is the Scar Seal. It's the same talisman, it's uh, they're both like a symbol engraved into Radagon's eyeball, but this one only raises your points 3, whereas... The one that we risk our necks for out in the Dragon Barrows raises it 5. You can't equip them both though, they don't stack, so... I only wanted to clear that boss for the runes, really. And to show you guys how to beat him. All you gotta do is just stay on him. I mean, most of his sword attacks will fly right over your head. But, um... Alright, so now... Let's see. We just did the Forlorn Hound, Everjail. We talked to Blight over there, furthered his quest line, And then we just did this guy, the Weeping Everjail. And... The only other one that we really have available to us right now is the Stormhill one. And that is... The Crucible Knight. I suppose we could go steamroll him real quick. I don't think I want to go to the cave. I don't think I meant to do that. But here, let's do this. Uh, yeah, Gatefront will work just fine. The Crucible Knight is like 150% more difficult than uh here i don't want to run through the giant and all that stuff the crucible knight the guy that we're about to fight is 150 percent more difficult than the other two ever jails combined like he is absolutely the most challenging boss out of the ever jails in limgrave but i'm sure you guys how to beat him he is I, yeah, I can say with confidence that I think he's probably my favorite boss in this entire chunk of land, this whole region. Like, all of Limgrave, this guy's probably my favorite. Took me a long time to learn how to beat him, and he killed me a lot. Like, I struggled so much harder against this guy than the other two, 100%. But, 
going to show you guys how to beat him. He's a lot of fun to fight. And for this guy, before you come in here, I really recommend getting the Sword Seal. And the other thing is you want to have this. Absolutely do not come in here without your barricade shield. Okay, we hit decently hard. That's not bad. So barricade shield is going to save you against this guy. Now, this guy has combos that are kind of similar to fighting a Black Knight. They're very fluid, like the hits all have the same timing, they're the same exact combos, but he mixes them up a lot, depending on what you do. Like, you know, he's got he's got stomp, stomp attacks, he's got roll catch attacks, like... And everything he does is based on distance. So, if you are not a certain distance close to him, he won't do certain attacks. But if you get near him, he will continue full combos. So the idea with this guy is if you don't block his attacks, like if you prefer to dodge or whatever, you really want to dodge away from him instead of towards him or around him. So there we go. He would not do that he would not continue the combo. What you want to do is I'll show you. Watch this. See if we can get him to do the attack. Go one two. Okay, that did not work at all, like it was supposed to. <laughs> so that's the combo we want, and I'm gonna show you guys a really cool trick with it. Okay. Ow. So yeah, he does chase down stuff, but if you just sprint away from him, you can heal. So let's see what we can do. To beat this guy. Stomp. Don't want that. I want the two-hand attack. There we go. Two. I was not close enough, though. So I was not supposed to do that right there. That was a terrible idea. But I need my barricade shield. Like, I need it. What in the fuck? Okay. <laughs> Got stuck on a rock. No big deal. All right. That was a terrible first run against that guy, but it's okay. We can spawn nearby because of the Stake of America. Okay, is it just me, or has my ability to play this game severely tanked in the last two episodes? It's kind of crazy. Now, admittedly, we are fighting this guy early. I mean, he's... Probably shouldn't be fighting him at this level, but we'll be alright. Okay. Hold him down. Shield barricade. So, let's see if we can get him to do the full combo. There we go. Two. So, what you want to do with that guy, or with that attack, is it's very similar to fighting the Grafted Scion. You want him to do the two-handed stomp. Like, you want him to attack you with two hands on the sword, not one-handing. And I'll show you what I mean. There we go. One, two. And it did not work that time because I ran out of stamina, but what you can do against that guy is you can, uh... You can block the second to last hit, and then you can do your, uh... You can do your guard counter, and it'll take you straight under the final hit. It's a very cool, like, kind of mechanic against him. Let me see if I can get him to do it. No, that is the 100% the wrong hit. There we go. Two. Wow, it didn't work! <laughs> I'm so used to that working against that guy. I wonder why it doesn't. That's so weird. I can't blame the patch for everything, I suppose, but all right, I'm just gonna like kick his ass. It's fine. I think I spend a lot of energy trying to uh, show you guys these mechanics, and then I end up just getting distracted and not actually fighting the boss. Okay, two. So you see how his moves are really kind of like fluid, like a Black Knight, you know? Like very direct hits. 
and they kind of have like a wind up to them. So with a lot of his attacks like that, you can kind of roll punish, you know? Come on, man, what can do? One-handed stomp? Okay, that's fine. And then, bam, follow up with a stab, and then he won't do anything after that. Nothing? Okay. He usually finishes the combo if I'm close enough to him. So almost any time he, like, finishes with the stab, you can usually punish him for that. However, we are about to get into Phase 2. Phase 2 has a whole different set of rules on it. So we're not doing very much damage. I mean, I would say we're probably shouldn't be fighting him right now. Honestly, we have, like, no business fighting him like this. Because we're not doing nearly enough damage to be able to finish this fight fast enough. But, uh, I'm gonna shoot my shot see what I can do. Okay, once we get him to half health, that's when it's gonna get really annoying. I mean, if he doesn't, if he does not finish the combo, I'm gonna take advantage of it. Just like that, hell yeah! There we go. Here's phase two. You can roll straight through that attack, but the problem is when he lands, he might do a really big area of effect attack. And when he does that, I will show you guys what to do. All right. So there's his new hit. When he finishes with a stabbing combo, he is almost guaranteed to do a tail sweep. So, you really gotta watch out. So what I'm doing is, I'm paying attention for tail sweeps right now. Like, essentially what I'm doing is instead of trying to attack and be aggressive, I'm just gonna pay attention to what he does, and I'm gonna figure out which attacks do or don't end with a tail sweep, because the tail sweep is pure holy damage. It will do damage through your shield. You can't block 100% of it, so you absolutely have to rely on rolling it. There we go. Okay, so that might be an opportunity to attack. If he does the running slash and then he ends with a, a tail sweep, you can hit him afterwards. Oh wow, that does almost as much as one of my hits. That's hilarious. Let's let's play around with this. Let's see what can be done, huh? Oh fuck. <laughs> he can go right under it. That's funny. Uh, <laughs> okay, maybe there is more to the confessor than I realized. <laughs> All right, that's kind of cool. All right, let's 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 do this, huh? Let's play around with the bolts for a second, see if we can find some cool openings, huh? crazy. I have the crossbow in my hand, right? And now he's like, ooh, now he's like super aggressive. Wow. All right. All right. That's kind of cool. Oh, shit. Okay. Now, because I'm staying out of range, he's really not bringing the tail out. That's kind of cool. So this is like, I guess we found one reliable way to really avoid the tail. Oh, shit, I'm out. That's okay. Two. He didn't do it. All right, cool. Nope. Not getting me with the tail, sir. I will win via patience. Okay, let's do this. No. No, these, these. Okay. Let's, uh, oh. let's experiment with Scarlet Rot, shall we? I have a feeling you can't proc it on him. I'm almost certain, but 
I want to try. Just to see. I've never done it before. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. I do know that there are... Ow. There are several bosses that you can proc the Scarlet Rod on, but I think he may not be one of them, because I'm getting some pretty consistent hits on him, and it's not doing it. Shit. Wrong button. I didn't mean to heal. Fuck. Alright. There's time yet. We might build the meter up. He might just have, like, super duper high resistance to it. And I know I can beat this guy, so, like, I don't mind kind of experimenting like this playing around. Oh! <laughs> he almost stabbed the fuck out of me. Oh, damn. What a waste. Oh, shit! That was ornery as fuck, bro. Heal. I really don't think we can Scarlet Rod him. It's unfortunate. Whoa! Whoa! He fucking wants the booty, bro. I'll waste all these things on you. I don't give a shit. And then you saw the one time I had, like, a really clear headshot on him. It did, like, 80-something damage. That was pretty badass. Okay. Let's finish him with patience. Patience will win this fight. I promise you that. As long as you wait for your openings and you're smart, he'll die. I did not finish the combo because we were out of range. You see that? It did that damage through my shield. That attack hurts real bad. If you get hit by the tail directly, I mean, blocking is better than nothing, but ideally you want to roll it. Let's go, man. You know I'm gonna beat you. And do not run him down because that right there. That's... <laughs> I'm glad he did it at least one time so I could show you guys. But, uh, yeah, that's how you beat that guy. Okay, you get the Aspects of the Crucible tail and 2,100 runes. I think he's worth more than that. He's a pretty tough boss. Like, I probably should have waited till a little bit later to fight him because we were not doing particularly good damage against him. But, uh, yeah, he's a very fun fight. Like, learning how to counter him and uh and punish his attacks accordingly is a blast it's a lot of fun so okay we have basically all the ever jails out of the way and i think now it is time i keep uh i keep saying i'm gonna get around to this and i finally mean it today we are gonna do castle mourn i didn't get the grace to that place though i really should have um, let me see. So, Fort Height. This is where the NPC went that we met. This is the guy that uh, 
we entered into his service. He's inside here right now. The enemies are still there too. You're going to have to fight through some enemies to get up to him, but he's it's a small fort. He's not very far in. He's just up on the he's up on the the high ground that's facing the ocean. All right. Let's do this. I'm going to go straight down through here. And yes, the fire golem does respawn, but it's okay because we know exactly what to do against this guy. Maybe he doesn't. Oh, wow. That's easy. Shoot, man, I guess they were feeling nice when they put this one in front of you, because I promise you the other ones do respawn. Like, I think, off the top of my head, I can remember almost every single location for those, uh, for those fire golems that shoot the giant arrows at you, and they all respawn. Maybe not this guy, though. No items. All right. So here we go. Castle Morn. It's uh, the death and destruction is already upon us. These are dead Godric soldiers. Very likely killed by the Misbegottens, which is what they're called. I think I misreferred to them as demi-humans, whereas the Misbegottens... And uh, the demi-humans are very different. They're not the same thing at all. And once we get up in here, I can explain the difference to you guys. First hand. Let's level up. Just so we don't have all of our checking account in our wallet. I will go with... Another point of dexterity. Why not? Let's get our dexterity up. Because there's going to be a great spear we're going to pick up relatively soon, and I'm going to want to use that. So we'll ride the lift up. And if you hear any kind of moaning or whining sound, that is my cat. Ignore her. She's incredibly vocal. She does not understand the concept of things being subjective. She thinks everybody wants to hear her. Alright, Castle Morn. There's some cool shit happening in here. So, these are the ones responsible for killing the Godric soldiers that we saw. These are not demi-humans, as I referred to them when we were pushing our way south to where we are now. These are the Misbegottens. Totally different. There's different kinds as well. There's three different kinds of them. There's these, like, regular grunt guys that we already fought. They have, like, the chicken wings and the... And the eagle wings and the, the, the lizard tails, they're kind of crazy looking. And they have that weird little cleaver, curved sword looking thing. And then you have the big guy up here that's rallying them. And he's got a little bit different thing going on here. He's more reptilian in nature. And he's got a big axe. And it hurts bad. Like, gotta be smart when we deal with that guy. And then the other ones that we have are going to be way up here. You can actually see them on these pillars they have different wings and they fly and shoot arrows at you they got a nasty grab attack but from what i can tell what's going on here looks like they hung these soldiers themselves after killing all the other ones and uh, it looks like the battle was definitely won here the the misbegottens steamrolled this place and their captain here that's got the big axe is rallying them and is like we did it cheers so I don't know who this is they're burning. Like, I don't know if it's, like, somebody that's important or whatever. I don't know why that person is being burned out of everybody here. I mean, it's it's a big fire on a big pile of corpses, and that's a big old beam that they're strapped to. Like, I would imagine that there's some purpose behind why this person is burning. But I don't know who it is. There's no way to identify them. But there's going to be several different kinds of enemies in this very first area. Like, you've got not only the giant group of misbegottens that we're going to fight the smart way, but you have some dogs perusing around too. Highly recommend killing them first. But we're going to have to worry about all that later. What we're going to do in the moment here is... Let me see what I can craft. Because I need bolts really bad. Okay, bone bolts. Um, those will do. Because, I mean, honestly... How many is it going to give me? So one set is... Okay. 
Yeah. Let's get ourselves up to 90, at least. So now, we can use the crossbow to pull the dogs. Great. Alright. So, because we are already at the stopping point for the video, I promised we would get to Castle Morn today. I wish we had been able... I wish I had enough time to actually go in and make some progress into it, but unfortunately we are at our limit here as far as time goes. So, the next episode is going to be really exciting. In uh, part 12, we're going to actually go into Castle Morn. We're going to clear it. I'm going to show you the smartest way to go about it, exactly what to do against the enemies you come up against, and uh, we're going to be smart. We're going to use our heads, we're going to have a lot of fun clearing this uh, this big giant dungeon down here, and that is going to completely finish all of Southern Limgrave for us, pretty much. So, and then from that point, it's crazy to think about, but uh, once we finish Castle Morn, it's going to be time to go push into Stormvale. We're going to go completely steamroll Margit, work our way into Stormvale, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, stay tuned for part 12, where we'll finish Castle Morn and then push our way into Stormvale. Castle Morn will probably take a couple episodes to clear. Uh, just be mindful of that, because it's a long one. But um, thank you guys so much for joining me in this episode of the in-depth playthrough for Elden Ring. I've been your faithful host, Let's Play Dark Souls HD, and I will catch you guys in the next video.